Welcome back, TCS TV viewers. And uh, yes, you've been waiting all year for this. Mm. We're finally here. This is the big fan favorite, the best and worst of 2016. And of course, here is Jordan. Hi, guys. My uh, compatriot, my brother in arms, my I, I shoot the videos video and edit them. wife, um, so to speak. And uh, yeah, guys, we are here to not only talk about what we really liked about this year and the things that we didn't like and the trends and stuff as usual, but also to get inebriated. That is part of the tradition, <laughs> yes. And uh, we do that in the form of some games. Yeah. And last year, if you'll recall, back there at, uh, on your computers at home, we uh, drank a huge like pitcher of old-fashioned. We old did a pitcher fashion. of old fashioned. Yeah, uh, It was probably the worst cocktails. hangover I've ever had, so that, we're not going to do that No, this we're not going to do that this year. Now, this time we are going to celebrate our Canadian heritage in a few ways. Yep. Uh, but we got one of uh, our favorite beers. In fact, folks at home, this is my favorite beer mm. of all time. Okay, so this is Trois Pistoles from the Unibrau. Um, uh, Trois Pistoles from Unibou. They're perfect. <laughs> it sounds less like a facial hair defect. That yeah. way. Uh, delicious dark beer, but it's oh, very strong. It's 9%. Exactly. Extra fault, very strong. Now, we've also got a uh, Canadian operation. What, what specifically makes this Canadian? <laughs> well, what specifically makes Canadian is the fact that there's French all over it, right? This is, uh, this is okay. Le Jeu de Dexterité uh, operation. I mean, and I don't speak French. Being Albertan, we really don't speak People French. People are going to call you out on that I'm accent. Gonna well, Le Jeu de le Dexterité is good. So every turn, we're both going to try and play a piece. If it buzzes, away we go. Now, if you've been watching already, and this is your third episode with those best and worst. Um, fourth. You'll re fourth? You'll remember that Jordan, I can't remember that part. You'll remember that Jordan is terrible at all these games. So right. hopefully you can compete this with is me this the, time. This is the year of redemption. <gasps> all right, I guess we're moving on. Yeah, keep going. It begins. <laughs> Okay, so starting it off, best lenses of 2016. Yes. Yeah, and number three in our, in our start here is the Nikkor 105 1.4. I'm surprised it even fits behind my slender frame. <laughs> it is so big. Uh, but you know, we love this lens because optically it's fantastic. It is sharp at all apertures. And even though you hate thin depth of field, I still want you I, over because it does something unique. Exactly. The, if you're looking in this focal length, this is the fastest lens I think ever made. Um, and it is a focal length I love. I don't know if shooting at 1.4 to 105 mils is always a great idea, no, but if you need isn't. to, you have an option now. <laughs> and it's not dog <laughs> at 1.4. Exactly, it is beautiful at 1.4. For sake of mentioning, there were some pieces missing from this, so we've stolen some from Star Wars Operation. Yeah, I, in fact, I don't you're think going, they're, you're I'm going, going to try one. Right they're incredibly difficult because they're oh. for that. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, exactly. But you know, nice. does anybody have a game of operation out there that isn't missing pieces? I doubt it. So our number two choice for lens of the year is actually the Sony G Master 2470. <gasps> is that I'm, because they, you know, shower us with thousands of dollars worth of gear? Of and course. Money uh, and flies all I mean, but that's the only reason we award anything yeah, to exactly. anything, and they happen to, in this <laughs> case, give us the appropriate amount of money. Um, <laughs> though the 2470 earned it handily. When it we went out and did a 2470 shootout, I was expecting the Canon to be the clear winner. And the Canon was excellent. And it but. is a spectacular lens, but the Sony pulled ahead. Yeah. Uh, and I especially actually prefer the out-of-focus rendition from the Sony. For sure, 70 mil is also really sharp, really, yeah. really consistent. And it's a smoking fast focuser with the A7R Absolutely. II. Uh, it really surprised us, and for that reason, it found itself on our list. Hey guys, so Jordan was just Instagramming there. Check us out on Instagram while we do our little thing here. And I'm going to talk about our number one lens of 2016, uh, the Nikon 70-200 to 2.8 mm -hmm. AF-S. It's got nanocrystal coatings, it's got VR, they put fluoride in this thing. Look how light and compact and throwable it is. So nice. And, uh, juggleable is important. Juggleable, you know, it's breathing <laughs> corrected. Uh, it's just a beautiful compact lens and it's still such a workhorse lens. You're going to use the 70-200 2.8 as a professional all the time. So. Badass lens, they really hit out of the park with this one. Absolutely. We do want to throw in an honorable mention in this category because it was so close to making our list, but the Sigma 30mm 1.4 is just a stunning lens available in Sony E-mount and Micro Four Thirds. It's relatively inexpensive, it's insanely sharp, focuses extremely well. Uh, there's a big gap, especially in the Sony line of affordable, excellent primes, and this one certainly fills that bill. If you're shooting one of these mounts, it's a lens to definitely check out. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to go slow because it's probably my only one Enjoy in the Enjoy it. Night. It's delicious. 
All right, video time. Our number three choice for best video camera mm -hmm. is becoming a trend every year. It's not actually a video camera, but actually the, the FZ2500 from Panasonic, yeah. which is styled like a stills camera, but honestly, you look at the spec list, it might as well be a video camera. Unlimited Absolutely. record time, which has always been one of the problems with still cameras. Uh, the zoom lens that doesn't shift externally Beautiful with it. Footage, uh, it can shoot. It can shoot log potentially. Um, mm -hmm. I really loved working with it. And now that we've played with the production version, I do think it's probably one of the best one-inch camcorders on the totally. market. Blew me away with the 10-bit 422 output. Yeah, kicking it out to an like, external recorder, it's it's that? almost unheard of from a stills camera, especially one at that price point. So if you're looking for a travel video camera, it's probably the best option out there right now. All right, guys, number two, best camera video of 2016. Uh, funny enough, we're actually gonna give it to the Sony PXW-Z150, even though it's an older design. And uh, it's funny, it's got the one inch sensor, which are just taking over right now. It is the stack chip, almost no rolling shutter. 10-bit 422, in camera at 1080, does nice 4K as well. Um, but on top of that, you know, these cameras are compact, they're affordable, they've got a great built-in lens. And despite our best efforts to try to convert people over to mirrorless cameras and, you know, cameras with interchangeable lenses, people still have a real need for this all-in-one ENG style camera. Right, and it always seemed to me with the Sony bodies, they'd always pull something away. X70, it was like, ah, you gotta pay for the 4K. Right. With this one, they just threw everything they could at a nicely designed body. It's, it's a great, well-rounded camera. people are loving it, it's yeah. selling. So our number one pick of the year is the DJI Osmo. Now, it's a fairly small package, really light, uh, and the price point's a big part of this. It is really affordable, so you've got a lot of people who are looking at gimbals right now. It's kind of the year of the gimbal uh, for their A-cams, bigger cameras, but a lot of the time it was just less expensive to grab one of these guys. The image quality is quite nice on it. It works very consistently. You don't have to balance it, and I really like the cell phone integration of it. Uh, we've seen vloggers, but we've even seen higher-end productions using these all the time. It's a really important, influential camera, and for that reason, we're giving it our video camera of the year. Uh, I'm gonna go for, I don't think anyone's done wrenched ankle yet. I mean, I haven't really, <laughs> come on. <laughs> even when you're not touching it. <laughs> I mean popcorn. Why, just be a professional. Okay, chew and swallow, okay. and then be a professional and then host yeah. this episode. All right, here we go. All right. So viewers, we are gonna take just a little bit of a break. Now we're gonna talk about the best trends of 2016. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, it wasn't like the most exciting year, but there was some cool stuff, eh? Yeah, I mean, the biggest one for me, honestly, has been the advent of medium format, digital yeah. mirrorless. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's a system that makes perfect sense for it. Right, um, done it to all the other formats, pretty much every yeah. other single sensor size. And, I mean, the common complaint with DSLR versus mirrorless is DSLRs in some areas still have an autofocus advantage. Right. But let's be honest, uh, <laughs> medium digital format. medium format, <laughs> anything's an improvement over that. So yeah. it's less of a concern, it makes a lot more sense to me. Now right now the big players are gonna be the Hasselblad X1D, of course, which we have played with a little bit, yep. and then the Fuji uh, GFX coming out, which we touched, but haven't really had a chance to really test. Yeah, we weren't able to actually shoot a frame with it. But I love the concept of this yeah. because uh, it was always one of those options that photographers had back in the 35 days. If your style suited medium format, it wasn't this crazy unattainable price right. point. Uh, it's so an exciting thing. I, I still think that, you know, is it going to really pay off in the long term? I don't know. I mean, that's kind of what's cool about it as a camera reviewer. We have no idea. Mm -hmm. But uh, I do still think that the small sensors are catching up so much. I wonder if the big sensor really is going to offer that big a difference anymore. I mean, it may not be a huge technical difference, but there are some definite aesthetic advantages to digital sure. medium format. Uh, and it's going to be cool to see a lot more people get access to that. Yeah, honestly. the price is coming way down. Exactly. Yeah. It's really dropped down. And again, glass has always been a concern. You buy, you know, even when the Pentax 645 came out, it was a fairly inexpensive body, but you were still looking at four or 5,000 for glass. glass. But with these guys, they're mirrorless. Adapters. So you can just adapt old, you can go find a bunch of Bronica stuff in that that's really yeah. inexpensive drop it on, it makes a ton of sense. And I think that's really interesting. I also wanna see if they ever kinda of hash out the video features better than no, the context. No, they never will. Okay. Um, <laughs> and the other big thing that we kinda of found this year was electronic stabilizers. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're talking about everything. Gimbals have been huge as we've talked about. You know, that whole electronic motor stabilization with gyroscopes, but also five axis stabilizers. Like I know in, that's, in the camera box. Yeah, I know it's not new, but now it's becoming something that many of the brands are picking up. Exactly, it used to be Olympus was the standard bear for that yeah. and Pentax of course but not with the five axis 
Now we've got Sony jumping on it, which Panasonic happened a couple of years ago. On it, yep. Panasonic is the really interesting one mm -hmm. for me. Um, so as we start to see that, Canon and Nikon are starting to look a little lonelier with the decisions that they've <laughs> as made. Usual. Um, and I do think it's really going to, and I think they're realizing this is going to be a problem. You sure. look at some of the new Nikons have electronic stabilization, which is abysmal. It's like right. it's some of the worst stuff I've ever seen. And Canon like, has brought in their electronic stabilizer on the EOS M5 now. So they're recognizing that they're lagging behind. Exactly. But an optical solution where you're physically like a gimbal or a five axis and body stabilizer where you're moving the sensor, moving the camera. Um, mm -hmm. But I think they just want to keep selling more expensive stabilized lenses. Um, and I think that's a marketing strategy that's really going to start to show signs of aging this year. Yeah. Why don't you do the butterflies in the stomach? Butterflies in the stomach? Okay. Yeah. I'm not very good at this though, Jordan. Well, you've been practicing all day, Chris, and you've drank it's a lot It's called less. playing with my kids. Oh, oops, oh. <laughs> Okay, so that brings us to, of course, one of the big uh, topics of the evening, best camera of We've put it off as long as we possibly we can. We have, we have. So number three to start with, Fuji X-T2. Right. Um, you know, I mean, everybody universally loves this camera, the retro design. But on top of that, we've got a brand new 24 megapixel, megapixel. Megapixel, megapixel, yeah, keep mega, going. Megapixel sensor, which, uh, you know, makes it competitive with the Nikons and the Canons and the Sonys out there. Yep. And uh, on top of that, they, you know, what's great about Fuji, and I think for me, why, what makes this number three, not that it's a huge revolution, just you know, an innovation, but basically they looked at what does our camera not do. Exactly. It they, doesn't focus very well, and it doesn't do video very well. Yeah. They fix those things. And it, it's a huge improvement in both categories. It's one of the most well-rounded cameras on the market right now. Feels great, and especially coming from a video background, I love the implementation of the battery grip. Yeah. They've <laughs> give, I've asked for this for the longest time, so they give you your headphone jack on it. Uh, you don't have to worry about overheating when you're using that. It's a really smart system. It feels very well thought Absolutely. out top to bottom, and that's why it's one of our favorite cameras this year. But Jordan's tired of uh, my French Canadian accent. I don't here. like either. And of in these honor voices. of our Canadian heritage, I'm going to talk the way I talk as a true Canadian, not like I talk on YouTube why? for all you Americans, eh? So, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about number two. I'm going to let you take it off, Jordan. Okay, I'm going to speak eloquently as opposed to that. Um, so, our number two choice. Pentax K1. I primarily shoot video, but I love shooting. This made me want to go out and just take pictures all day. It's a great sensor. The pixel shift on it works insanely well, and it's so unbelievably well laid out. It is a joy to shoot with. We've waited so long for Pentax. I mean, they've been promising the full frame camera for over a decade. They well, finally yeah, delivered, and it was well worth the wait. What, what, what do you think? Oh, I think you'd, you'd have to. You know what? I, I recant. I don't want him to, to talk. get the Canadians to win uh, the, the 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 Stanley Cup, eh? Uh, I love that it's so damn rugged. You know, I could drink my beer and spill it all over there. I could scrape the ice off my car with it. Like it's just fantastic, eh? I can't think of a better, more rugged camera for a Canadian winters, eh? What to I'm do? Do it so good. Oh. Ow. Nikon D500, I think this surprises both, honestly. I, was I mean, it first really came out, we're like, that's an expensive crop sensor camera. Exactly. D750 price, um, but for a crop body. Yeah. But then we actually shot with this thing, and the autofocus is unbelievably yeah. good with it. It borrows the AF system from its big brother. It does a great job with it. Great buffer rate. Yeah. I mean, this camera does everything. Love the mic jack, the headphone jack. Uh, overall, just a fantastic journalistic and wildlife-based camera. This was kind of the year of the like the APS-C format, sure. and this is probably my favorite APS-C camera release this yeah. year. I mean, if you're looking for an SLR and everything that an SLR encompasses and what they're good at, this is the best example. Exactly. Of. Sports, wildlife, you can't touch this thing. Yeah. Now, we do have an honorable mention. We do. Best camera. And... Uh, why it's an honorable mention, not on the list, it's the Canon EOS 80D. I love that camera. I love it too, and why it's on the list is because, not that it's the most amazing camera out there, but that Canon just made a lot of shit before they released this camera. In, to the, yeah. in crop format, it's been a sure. long haul. I mean, you know, it's compounded by the fact that the 5D Mark III took so long to get updated, and you know, the 5DSR was a little bit lackluster, and you know, everybody's calling us Canon haters, but really when the Canon ES80D, we, we tried it, and it's like, we do love this camera. Yeah, They've really fun. improved it. They way. caught up in uh, the image quality, yep. and the dual pixel autofocus is still great. dual pixel's amazing, yeah. yeah. And an affordable camera, exactly. an accessible camera, and so I think totally deserving of the honorable mention of almost Absolutely. Best camera of the year. Here, Jordan, I'm gonna do it left-handed just to you know make it fair. 
You know, all your condescension doesn't really... Okay, so you got that piece out. Well yeah. done. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, give me the bottle. Yeah, yeah. So men do it, bra. <laughs> so we need to move on and, and maybe switch to a different game. But uh, you know, before we do that, people at home might be wondering why there's pink popcorn on the table. Right. And a giant number one balloon behind you. And like, I just drink. assumed it was a decor choice. No, Madeline, my my daughter, she had her first birthday. Oh, congratulations, so, yeah, Chris. thank you. So I don't normally, you know, have pink popcorn <laughs> you know, on the table, but it's damn good. Yeah, so you know what? I've got a game that uses your brains, or we've got Jenga. <laughs> <laughs> Jenga. Let's go Jenga. Maybe you're, oh, maybe you're, maybe, maybe I'm a, maybe a Jenga. Like an idiot savant. That's the, exactly yeah. the phrase I was looking for. Yeah, without the first word. Uh, we're going to play Jenga, but every time you pull a piece and succeed at not knocking the tower over, the other person drinks. The other person drinks, and that'll keep us going nice and quick. Okay, okay. so what are the stakes? Because that's a lot of the other person drinking. Should you fail, what are the stakes then? Oh, I don't know. I think we're going to have to come up with that one on the fly. Okay, here we go. All right. That's how you want to play it? Like successfully? Yes. Mm -hmm. it's generally, like generally when playing a game, right. do you tend to try to win? Yeah. I learned that from sport movies. <laughs> All right, worst video camera. Yes, and I'm going to let you do yours, but let me just preface this first by saying this. As you we do love to, to talk. Yeah, I do love to talk. As we go into the worst cameras of 2016 in all the categories, mm -hmm. um, I think you'll agree, yeah, that, um, that uh, you know, there weren't any bad cameras this year. There weren't any terrible, there was no XC10s. Let's just put it up that way. I mean, there well, no, there was an XC15, yeah, but we're, we're, not we're not gonna give them a break. We're not gonna go there. But XLRs. There was, <laughs> there was no terrible cameras this year. So really, we're gonna be more looking at what cameras didn't really improve very much, or you know, what manufacturers are kind of lazy with their cameras. Okay. Or what features really kind of hindered an otherwise fantastic camera. Okay. Anyways, you go ahead. I mean, that's a good thing to say for a lot of other cameras. I was genuinely disappointed in the Key Mission 170 from Nikon. I mean, they've decided we're going to diversify our brand a little bit. Action market seems to be a great thing to get into. First of all, that market's <laughs> dying very quickly. Yeah. Secondly, I can't come up with a reason why I would grab this over a GoPro besides maybe price point. But even then, you can get a GoPro 4 from yeah. last year cheaper than this camera. I mean, you can okay. find some still available. But no, it's it's a complete GoPro knockoff. And Nikon has some great stuff they could have put in this. They have a wonderful flat profile. They were like, oh, we don't want to put that in. That's for our higher end DSLRs. Yeah. Uh, it's 170 degree field of view, same as a GoPro. Um, I just don't see its advantage, honestly. Sure. I mean, the video quality was kind of, uh, The data know, rate yeah, is too low great. for a lot of fast I'll action. Give you that. I mean, devil's advocate, it's got a pretty decent stabilizer in it. It's electronic, um, it's not know, that decent. And I think, I think I could click to... on warp stabilizer in my editing software and do the same thing. I think they're trying to bridge between the 80 and the 360 with something, but I, I agree, okay, It yeah. completely feels like they have two interesting cameras in the key mission lineup, and they're like, well, we gotta throw something well, you know in what? the middle, and then the it's industry, a full lineup. The industry agrees with me because how many have we sold? Uh, like, have you sold one? I don't think so. I don't think I've sold one. Okay, so for worst video camera 2016, we have a dishonorable mention. Not bad enough to make the list, but I do want to talk about it. And interestingly enough, when we went on Instagram and Twitter and asked people, what's the worst camera of 2016 in any category? Many people said the 5D Mark IV, and that kind of surprised me because I actually really enjoy that camera. I think the image quality is beautiful. It handles great, focuses beautifully. But I think a big part of it is the overpriced uh, tag on there. It's just too expensive. And I think another part of it is the video quality. I mean, the 1080 is great, but everybody does pretty good 1080 now. The 4K, though, with that motion JPEG codec is basically useless. Jordan's changing cards every six minutes. It's ridiculous. The preamp's not great, even though you get a headphone jack. The crop factor is so heavy that it basically makes a lot of the EF glass, you know, not be able to perform to its potential. And you can't stick EFS stuff on there and use it. I mean, really overall, the camera just kind of disappointed in that 4K area. And that's sad because if Canon's trying to get their video market back, which they've been kind of let slipping, the 5D Mark IV was the perfect opportunity and they kind of let it go. We're doing some, oh yeah. Oh! So I'm gonna come up with something creative and disappointing for Jordan to do next. But otherwise, let's go to our next worst category. Uh, the Pentax 15 to 30. Okay, so here's my reason for this judgment, okay? Mm -hmm. You can buy in Canadian dollars, because that's how we communicate yes, exactly. here. Uh, you can get a Tamron 15 to 30 for 1550. 
Or right. you can get the Pentax version of that lens. Which means it's the same lens. This is an excellent lens, right. honestly. But you can get the Pentax version of that lens for $2,000 and they'll even take the stabilization off the lens for it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Three easy payments and uh, no image stabilization. And I hate this stuff because the beauty of getting in-body image stabilization is it should cut the cost of lens production sure. down. But we're not seeing that in a lot of cases. Like look at the new Sony line, their G Masters. But the Pentax is the most egregious example because the lens already exists with stabilization. They take it off, charge you more care. money, even though you're getting... I mean, why can't Pentax make the inbuilt stabilizer on the lens, sorry, on the sensor work with the stabilizer in the lens, right? And get yeah. more five has become competitive, yada, yada. And the K1 is such an amazing camera, which we love. Yeah. And yet, I think even Pentaxians have to admit that uh, the lens selection is a little stagnant for the exactly. camera. Unless I you're willing see, to break out your old... I want to see more stellar new options that match up with that great sensor. Right. And I think this is the wrong way to go about it. We're going to make this sort of boiler maker. We're going to ruin perfectly good beer here, okay? Uh, so, there's your drink. I'm going to go... I feel terrible about this. Here. Vodka? You know, I've got mixed feelings. I mean, feelings. I guess it'll blend I've got mixed better with beer than other about things. This, okay? Mm -hmm. So you're going to drop this shot in and then you're going to drink it. No rush. Um, and also, while doing it, you have to say something nice about me, which is going to be the hardest part of this. And you have to let me do my Canadian accent for uh, the rest of the show whenever I want to. Oh, fine. Okay. All well, right. the show's almost over. Thank yeah. you. Oh, oh, yeah. Drink it. Oh, that looks so good visually. Mm. Oh. It doesn't taste that good <laughs> visually. <laughs> I hope it's obvious. So, uh, while Jordan's punishing himself, remember you got to say something nice about me. Okay. Um, <laughs> what do you think well, about it's it? going to take some time. <laughs> uh, I do want to talk about, guys, something we are very excited about. Um, beers and cameras. This is a very cool thing. You guys should check it on Instagram. Just search beers and cameras. Really nice people out of San Diego. You know, we've talked to them. We've had a nice exchange. And it's funny because, you know, they're just doing it to build a community. You're going to need a towel for that. I That's going to be all over I your rug. I see that. Um, they're just trying to build a nice photo community and uh, yet at the same time, you know, it's just neat to have people come together. And anyways, long story short, uh, I, I saw their stuff on Instagram. I really liked it. I got in touch with them and now we've since started a Calgary chapter. And Caitlin, who's actually shooting the cam right now, you've seen her in her videos before. She's very excited about this. She's going to host a lot of these events. Um, she's also having a great time watching. Thanks, Caitlin. Just wrecked tonight. How are you doing? She's that? seen things. <laughs> How is that going? Uh, it's going okay. Yeah. Um, Chris? You keep your facial hair reasonably well under control, and I appreciate that. Uh, your photography has been better this year hey, than previous years. Thank you. The internet still says mean things, but uh, <laughs> I've, I've framed several of your pictures and hung them on my wall. That's bull****. Yeah, that I love stuff. you though too, I love you too. Okay. The Leica 262, the MD, I mean, like, dollar for face. performance. Okay, now listen to me. Dollar per performance, they t they do the courtesy of taking the LCD off of it, eliminating a lot of the menu options. Um, you know, JPEG, yeah. they're like, no, that's gone completely. And we're going to charge you a large premium for taking these things off these complicated menus. Um, I can see a lot of reasons why that's a very disappointing decision. This is a tough one for me because, first off, I will never be able to afford a Leica in my life ever, okay? There'll be... I know I'm the kind of Just person. Just keep posting, Chris. You're gonna get there. I'm the there. kind of person who will have so many more things that I need to spend nine grand on before I buy an MD two six two. But I, that being said, they took away all of this stuff, and yet I loved using that camera. I, know. I had some great photos of that camera. I had a great some of my favorite pictures. That. Right, you've taken. you know, yeah, the ones that you haven't actually hung on your wall, you bastard. And <laughs> I, I love that camera, and I. My hate... parents were legitimately <laughs> mad. I hate Leicas. I absolutely hate using them. I don't like rangefinders. I don't like shooting them. I think they're a terrible waste of money, considering what they are. They're a toy. They're a luxury item, and yet I had such a good time with the two six two. And it's exactly because it was so simple. You're like undermining my entire best. <laughs> Worst camera of the year. I think what we have to say is, you know, we always talk about these things. We always talk about price. We talk about what's it going to do. We talk about practicality. But in the end, the experience that you have with the camera, and I'm only saying this because I'm drunk, the experience that you have with the camera is such an important part of the whole process. You know, you were way more passionate about gasket, the MD you know? than you were about the best camera of the year. I think it should be the best camera 2016. Can we do the thing where it's like worst camera and then we like put a cross no, through that? It. And okay. then it's like it. no. no, and then it's like best camera. It's an honorable like, mention with it's an arrow pointing on to the Chris. List. Okay. Let's move on. Okay. Right. 
damn it. The classic blunder. <laughs> and so that's the end of our gaming, I think. Uh, yeah, there you go. Good mm. boy, there you go. I hit my teeth with the I shot glass. Is this because you've had too much to drink? Ow. Okay, so number three, worst camera of 2016. Again, it's a tough one. It, it's, it's a gray one, but Olympus Pen F. We gotta give it to the Pen F. I mean, here's, a, here's my issue with the Pen F. It's a beautiful camera. Beautiful, so beautiful. Such a nice looking camera. Everything Handles feels well. great, except I'm like, oh, I'm gonna click this dial. Oh wait, that's JPEG only. I mean, so the, no. yeah, and the menus are terrible. Yes, but that's Olympus. I mean, that's not new. That's right? not a recent development. No. But still, I mean, the big thing with our worst camera list this year is steps back. Yeah. And it's so weird to me that the new, like until the EM1 II came out, the flagship of the Olympus line focused worse than the yeah. EM5 Mark II. And it takes great photos, but yeah, it just focuses terribly and it's not affordable. It's an expensive It's an expensive camera. camera. So we're on our last uh, bottle of Trois Pistole. Eh? I and, lost a uh, Jenga, so I have to listen to this. I mean, you know, normally in Canada, you think about like Labatt Blue or Molson Canadian or something like I that. Don't. Eh? But I got to give it to them French Canadians so they can make some beer, eh? Uh, I wouldn't drink it during a hockey game. It's just too strong, but uh, whoa, it's pretty good stuff, eh? I'm going to take over because I can't handle this. So the Nikon D5 Gold is flames. On one of our worst cameras of the year because you know what I can't stand with a professional camera is a step backwards. And it does a great job specifically at high ISO, high speed shooting. But this is not every person's but camera. But it's so big, Jordan. It's, eh? it's a really it big your camera. Hands. And it's, it's a man's a lot of, camera. Okay. But men sometimes are like, boy, I'd like some detail in the shadows or the highlights. And it's so weird that the entry level Nikon D3300 has better dynamic range than Nikon's premium camera. That's true. Um, at low ISO, at low ISO, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's a past. weird camera because. You push the ISO higher in low light, no, and it's but amazing. It's a, but it's right? a camera that can't do everything. And that's exactly. what you should be getting when you're looking at a professional sure. camera. It's something you can bring to any shoot. How weird would it be if your pro photographer is like, oh, we're in this dark barn. Thank God, I'm using my Nikon D5. Oh, we're outside. I better grab my Nikon <laughs> D3300. D3 <laughs> yeah, well, sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great sensor in that camera. <laughs> that does bring us to our final worst camera of 2016. I have mixed feelings about this, but let me first off say, any camera that we do put on these best and worst ofs are cameras that we like to have played with ourselves, tested and tried. I'm sure there's some crap cameras that we're oh, not talking about. Oh, there's been some absolute bull but we've never But actually... we can't talk about it and vote for it unless we've played with it ourselves personally. And we went to Photokina, yes, and we, we were excited about the um, Yi or YI? Yi, Yi, Yi M1. New micro four thirds camera, sexy Great little sensor. camera. It attracted our attention. It's yeah. a 20 megapixel sensor that we've seen on some other cameras, which sure. is an excellent sensor. I love the micro four thirds mount, you know that. It was kind of like an interesting, kind of a like, like a knockoff kind of look sure. to it. So we were there like, oh, should we actually look at this? I think this is a really interesting camera. So I mean, and we're then breaking, we got there. We're breaking our rule a little bit because I mean, I played with it at Photokina. I did test a little bit, but obviously we didn't do a video on it or anything like fully review it. But I think the internet agrees with us too. I do want to start off saying that it is great that other manufacturers are kind of trying to get into this I market. I want to see more people enter into the photography market. It needs sure. some fresh blood. But these people felt like the first entrance in this entire digital marketplace. Like the focus yeah. felt like the EP1, was that the first oh, Olympus? Super bad. Or yeah, the Canon bad. EOS M, the very first one. <laughs> oh, like no, it felt like it. I totally did. <laughs> it was dog shit. And then on top of that, we looked at the JPEGs on the back screen and we know how good this sensor is. Sure. And other people have confirmed it to us. The raw files you can play with a ton. But I the mean, JPEGs looked like an, an Escher painting. No, not an Escher painting, because that that's where bad. people walk upstairs. The images were okay. What's kind of abstract? Good, but I mean, you know, it's expensive, it's weird, nobody's going to A Pollock painting. It. That's what they looked like. It looked like a <laughs> Pollock <laughs> painting oh, of what you were doing. Yeah, you're friendly drunk right now. Oh, you're not silly <laughs> at all. All right, Jordan, so this is the part of the show where we, you know, talk I, about our true feelings and we talk about how nope, we... Nope, this uh, is the part where we say goodbye. <laughs> no, 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 no. Nope, this, this is the part, part where we thank we say everybody. No well viewers. And get really schmaltzy. Um, you know, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. We do really love making this show for you guys and we're happy that you stuck with us uh, for another year. 
-hmm. one more year drum off i promise you i don't know maybe what eight or nine years from now you're gonna you're gonna beat me at something i tried hard tonight you and did. we um didn't i failed <laughs> so you're not the worst jenga player i've ever seen um, but you know, we'd also like to say, hey, check us out on Instagram. Yeah. Follow us. Follow us on Twitter. Us. Let us know what you think about the uh, the choices that we made here in 2016. Yeah, I do want to say definitely, like, first of all, big thanks to Caitlin for shooting this tonight. Yes. Uh, big thanks to my wife for letting us uh, shoot here in the house again, even though we're super loud. Our baby didn't wake up once. That's amazing. amazing. Yeah, amazing. absolutely. So thank you to Maddie for not waking up. And I do want to say as well, like the last year was a big year of growth for Camera Store TV. We right. got to do more traveling. Uh, we certainly saw a lot more exposure, things like that. So thank you to everybody who's absolutely. been helping us, supporting the channel, commenting, uh, all that kind of stuff. It's made a huge difference. But I need to go like sleep in a... <laughs> Like corner or a, a cab, if you. Yeah, thank you to uh, thank you to Unibu for the two pistols. Amazing uh, beer, which we bought though at uh, the liquor store for beers for and money, cameras is uh, coming up too. So uh, there's I love a lot beer. of stuff, and you know I think 2017. That's kind of the cool thing. We love doing this show at the end of the year because we never know what 2017 is going to hold. We had no idea what this year was going to hold, and actually, there was some really interesting developments. So stick with us let's uh let's all see what's going on together and uh, we'll hold hands and we'll, we'll go do it it'll be great okay let's hold hands and just stare at the lens right now all and right, then you slowly fade out here we okay. go okay no, it's just, okay it goes like that you want to be on top no i like no, to no, like this. Just, well, yeah. no i like to be here we go <laughs> yeah.